Hello, Hello. and welcome, welcome to, to our second, second virtual oh, of our <laughs> virtual summer, summer reading, reading program. program. I'm Robin, and I'm Kim, and today is going to be all about butterflies, one of our most most beautiful pollinators. Mm-hmm. So, um, set my remote control down here. Yeah. So today we're in the. Um, beautiful Malkovich Park here off the Benton Public Square in Benton, Illinois, in case you are an out-of-state viewer. Yeah. And we are having construction of our new courthouse, so we're kind of fighting some of that construction noise, so bear with us. <laughs> but we thought it would be nice to mm -hmm. be around some beautiful flowers, and if you've never been up to Malkovich Park, it's a beautiful place to have a snack, grab some ice cream, a drink. Um, and just enjoy the flowers. They are all taken care of by volunteers, and mm -hmm. we are so fortunate to have such a, a beautiful place. Yes. Uh, they decorate it for holidays, even in the winter time. There were some beautiful lights, but it's a nice place to just enjoy the scenery. There are lots of pollinators this morning, some stinging, so yes. you have to be careful. <laughs> but it's very beautiful. There are some shady spots. We're in the sun right now, but we're going to be in the shade in a few minutes. Yeah. So. There's a nice gazebo that you can sit in and get out of the sun, so it's really yeah. nice. It's beautiful. So I wanna share a couple of the books that we're going to be reading today. Uh, the first one I'm going to read is a shorter one. Um, it is called Butterfly, Butterfly, and this would be a perfect book for the readers with a shorter attention mm -hmm. span, so I'm going to read this one first. Uh, the second book is called Velma Gratch and the Way Cool Butterfly. So this will be the second book I read. So for those of you who are have a longer attention span and can listen to a longer book, this will be the second book. So mm -hmm. these will both be available to be checked out at the Benton Public Library. Okay, and then we're also going to kind of go over our swag bags. If you haven't picked up your swag bag yet, you want to come in and get your swag bag. It's got all kinds of neat stuff in it, and it also has your reading journal. And this is your reading journal. It's got the paper clip on it. Inside of it are your stickers to fill out your reading journal with. You'll want to do five. Every time you get um, five done, you get a uh, Mm, brag tag, brag tag. <laughs> swag bag, brag tag, a lot all of those rhyming, rhyming words. <laughs> anyway, and uh, to do that, I'm going to let Robin tell you because she's got it under control a little better than I do. Well, <laughs> I don't know about that, but, and we've had several kids, we had someone come in this morning who had already read 10 books. So mm -hmm. every time you read 10 books, if you are a reader, you can read on your own. Uh, if you're a reader, 20 minutes a night. A, a good uh, standard. If you're a non-reader, every time somebody reads a book to you, you can put a sticker on there. And this is going to last the whole summer. So you have the opportunity to get 10 brag tags. So every time, each week, you fill in five stickers, come into the library, and get a brag tag. And it's a good idea to come into the library about once a week and mm -hmm. get new uh, library books anyway. So that really works out. So we're hoping everyone will get their reading logs filled up. If you are a faster reader and you can read faster than that, good for you. I know my grandkids love to read. Yes. Um, and they've been well, in the library too. several <laughs> times. So um, you can get started on that right away. Okay. And if you are on vacation and you can't come to the library every week, I know this is a big vacation time, um, that's fine. Or if you are one of those people who didn't get a chance to sign up for the summer reading program, sign up now. Oh, yeah. You did not miss any, um, there's a pollinator now, <laughs> a bumblebee. <laughs> we must be smelling quite yeah. sweet. <laughs> But if you did not get a chance to sign up for the reading program, it is not too late. We have all the supplies you need. You can sign up for the reading program right now. Tell your friends and they can still get the swag bag and any of the craft projects that they've missed. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can always watch at, at your leisure That's anytime. Right. So anytime. you're not gonna miss a program. All so right. our craft project this time is going to be combined with our science project. Yes. So they are going to be butterflies. 
but the science part is how we're going to do this. So mm -hmm. we're excited to show that yeah. to you. Got two here. And mm -hmm. they all turn out quite differently. So yeah. we're excited to see that. So right. I guess we are ready to get started with our first book. That's right. And all our right. first book is going to be this very glittery, shiny one. Butterfly, butterfly, butterfly. butterfly. All right. See you okay. at the next reading of the book. Here is our first book, Butterfly, Butterfly, a pop-up book of color by Peter Horacek. Now this is a very interactive book, so I hope you come and check it out from our library. This gives you a hint or a clue of what's to come. One day, Lucy found a beautiful butterfly. She played with it and chased it all around the garden. The next day, Lucy couldn't find the butterfly anywhere. I don't see it anywhere, do you? But she did find a pink earthworm wriggling along the ground and a brown spider busy spinning her web. See the brown spider? Now this is the exciting part of the book. Look as you turn the page. See the hole? Then Lucy discovered a green beetle. The hole in the book becomes the green beetle. And a family of very spotty red ladybirds scurrying about. Look, what do you think that's going to turn into? She spotted a snail with an orange shell slithering. Three purple caterpillars munching a leaf. A shimmering blue dragonfly. <gasps> What's that going to turn into? <gasps> and a yellow bee with a stripe buzzing about. She's discovered a lot in the garden. But Lucy couldn't find the butterfly anywhere. She looked and looked. Lucy lay down in the cool grass to wait. And you can see all the different creatures that she did find. Then high in the sky, There it was, her colorful, beautiful butterfly. Look at that page. So beautiful with all the different colors. It looks like it's flying, doesn't it? Look how happy she is. And that's the end. And there's the picture with all the different creatures she found in her garden. That's the end, and you can check this out in our library. I hope you enjoyed it. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. We are ready for our craft segment. And it includes our science also. Yes, it does. So you're going to get these little craft baggies here. And it's going to have... Um, I feel like a scientist already with my baggie. <laughs> it's going to have a marker, a um, chenille stem, and a... I can't get that out. Clothespin, a clippy one, and coffee filters. I got a green marker. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You, all the markers will do different things. So that's what's going to be exciting about having different markers. Okay. Um, 
and if you have extra markers at home you may want to do some different colors and try those out okay. so and my chenille stem is a different color than yours too well butterflies have different colors of antenna and that's what these are for oh okay so they can be any color you want all right so we're going to get our coffee filters here and I'm having a little bit of trouble with wind. And you're going to make a big, well, not a big circle, but you're going to do a circle on the inside. You right can kind of it. follow that circle that's mm -hmm. automatically on there. Yeah. Does it have to be super neat? No, it doesn't. It's what it's going to do. I'm going to color mine kind of messy. I'm not yeah. a very good color. I'm just going to color mine. Yeah, and I just kind of make my circle and then color around it afterwards. Now, if you have a big fat marker, then you can just make a, a circular swoop and be done with it. So there isn't really a special way. We can just no. color it any way, mm -hmm. right? Yes. You can see some of mine. It's kind of like getting out of the lines there because it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the whole idea with it. Okay. Look at mine. There you go. <laughs> I just kind of scribbled mine. And you know what? It might be a good idea to put something under it mm -hmm. because sometimes it comes through. Yeah, it came through on mine. You can see all kinds of orange on my handy dandy box here. All right. Then the next thing we're going to do is fold it up. You can see we're going to fold it in half and then in half again. So you've got that little point there. And then kind of looks like a snow cone. Yep, it sure does. I'm going to put that there to hold it. And then we're going to put water in these cups here. And this is the important part. You only need a tiny, mm -hmm. tiny bit of water. Tiny bit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, I, I may have too much. Whoa, Nelly! I start to say you might have too much. I think you're good. Yours. You do not want to put so much water in there that the water touches your uh, marker. Right. That's important. I think it's okay. Now I'm going to take my cup up in case I need to get them close to the camera. Okay, I am too. We've got them taped on here because of the wind. You don't have to tape them at home, unless you're doing it outside in the wind. Okay. So we're gonna put it down, and then the water is going to... Yep. <laughs> Go. Okay. The water is gonna soak up there. Oh, yours is working fast. Yeah. Yours is working really fast. Yeah. I think it's because I kind of crushed my point down there but you can see oh yeah you can see that that water goes up there and it's making the marker spread it's kind of like the same type of thing as last week's I'm gonna it's wicking up there okay and I'm gonna go touch the camera okay we're not a preview. okay she, ooh, and you can see that it starts pulling out different colors I don't know if you can see on this green one there's some blue pulling up, and on my orange one, there's some yellow pur pulling up. Because remember, green is made with yellow and blue, so Ooh, it's going to separate. You can really see the yeah. blue on this one. And then there's some darker, like down at the bottom of mine, you can see some pinky red tones. Those yellows really come out on top. We're just going to let it go. It's as you can. And different markers, different brands will do different things. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. And different colors this do side different of things. This green really looks yeah. nice. There's mine. While this is working, um, actually Kim, one of yours, uh, that's actually a black marker. Yeah. This is it. This one's the black marker. Ooh. And this one was a teal marker, wasn't it? Kind of a yes. teal blue color? Yes. 
Mm -hmm. But you can see this doesn't even look like a black marker anymore. Yeah. It pulls out some purple. There's some purple, of course, and then right along the edges, there's blues. And that's just from a black marker. And this one, which I'm gonna take it apart, this one has a lot of, uh, it looks like there's some purple in mm -hmm. here and some blue, and this one has a lot of different colors yeah. in it also. And there's actually two different colors of blue. That's what's really neat with this one. There's the dark blue and that lighter blue. And then this one, this one actually touched one of the other colors. <laughs> but yeah. you can see like some pink. Mm -hmm. There's pinks right there. There's orange, and then the lighter peachy orange, and right up along all these edges is yellow. And that's how so. all the colors come apart. Yeah. Okay. So once the colors start coming apart, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this green one really came out Wow, it did. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Look at all the colors in the green one. You want to lay it out and let it dry and they dry really quickly especially if you lay it in the sunshine yeah where for time purposes you know again so you don't have to watch something yeah. dry I'm gonna lay this one right here once it dries oh, I'll lay it so people can see it yep. lay it here on the white box yep there you go once you it dries it. I gotta go get mine, they just blew away. <laughs> yeah. So once it dries, all you do is just pinch it up together in the middle, but you wanna wait until it dries. Yeah. And they dry fast. Put it in the middle of your clip. Mm -hmm. what's so neat about using the different markers you never know how it's going to yeah, come out. It's really great. So. Except permanent markers won't work. Oh correct. Washable markers work. They do but some of them don't work as well. Mm -hmm. and the it, biggest key is not very much water. Yes <laughs> not very much water at all. As a matter of fact I think I almost had too much water in this one. And then pinch in the next one and put it in and then just kind of Butterfly wings. And then the other thing, you have to be careful. Sometimes on the ends mm -hmm. of these, they're very sharp. But you can just hold it on and twist it around your marker. Well, actually, I folded mine in half first. I should have. So you know where the halfway mark is. And then twist it around. Put it on there. Twist it around. If you notice, Robin and I did our antenna different. We did. But it still works, and no matter what. And sometimes they look very different mm -hmm. when you see them in nature, too. Yep. I mean, then there's all different ways you could do those. So there we have our butterflies. Hello, butterfly. Hello. So thank you for joining us for our craft segment. So now it will be time for our next story, mm -hmm. Velma Gratch and the Way Cool, cool butterfly. butterfly. All right, our next book is Velma Gratch and the Way Cool Butterfly by Alan Madison and Kevin Hawks. On the inside cover, it has the list of many of the caterpillars and their names. Velma Gratch was the youngest of the three Gratch sisters. Frida, the oldest, had gone through first grade first, followed by Fiona. Now it was Velma's turn. The chorus teacher remembered Frida the best because she had a voice like an angel. 
The gym teacher remembered Fiona the best because she ran like the devil. At the first grade teacher, Mr. Plexipus, fondly remembered both sisters because of Frida's miraculous math and Fiona's spectacular spelling. Everyone from the class guinea pig to the principal had magnificent memories of the older grudge girls, but they could hardly even recall Velma's name. This made Velma feel as if she did not belong in the first grade at all. She wanted to curl into a ball and roll right back into kindergarten. Of course you belong, cooed Velma's mother, trying to cheer her up. You've only just begun. Soon everybody will notice you. Velma couldn't wait. She needed to be noticed now. In chorus, she sang loudest so that the teacher could hear her best. In gym, she ran slowest so that the teacher could see her best. And in class, she refused to read and muddled her math. Mr. Plexipus lamented that she was the first Gratch sister ever sent to the principal's office. This brought a small smile to Velma's lips. Littlest Gratch, why are you singing so loudly in chorus and running so slowly in gym? inquired Principal Crossley. Because, answered Velma, I want you to remember me just like you remember Frida and Fiona. The principal's owlish eyes opened wide. But my dear, those gratches are remembered for good things. Velma's small smile pretzel twisted into a full blown frown. Science was Velma's favorite subject. She had learned many fabulous facts, like how a rainbow is born and why a volcano burps. The latest lesson was about butterflies. Mr. Plexipus explained that a butterfly starts as an egg. The egg turns into a caterpillar. The caterpillar disappears into a chrysalis which is a little sack and does not come out until it is changed into a beautiful butterfly. He called this changing metamorphosis. Velma didn't want to forget this extra long word, so she repeated it again and again as she walked home. Metamorphosis, metamorphosis, metamorphosis. Frida, when you were in first grade, did you study butterflies? Velma asked her oldest sister. Nope, we learned about worms, Frida replied. Fiona, when you were in first grade, did you study butterflies? Velma asked her middle sister. No, we found out about frogs, Frida stated. Well, said Velma proudly, we are studying butterflies and and metal more for this? That's way cool, Frida declared, and Fiona bobbled her head in way cool agreement. Velma read everything in the library about butterflies. She discovered that there are 20,000 different kinds, which was a lot. She adored the ones with colorful names, brown elfin, frosted flasher, sleepy orange, and the ones with funny names, comma, question mark, American snout, not to mention the ones with strange names, morpho, painted lady, gossamer wing. But her favorite butterfly of all was the orange and black monarch. When it got cold, all the monarchs would fly south to Mexico to stay warm. Velma thought this was an amazing coincidence because last winter vacation, she and her family had also flown south to Mexico to stay warm. She sure is doing a lot of research. In science, Mr. Plexipus announced that they would take a class trip to the Butterfly Conservatory, a place where real butterflies were collected and cared for. Because Velma didn't want to forget this extra long word, she repeated it again and again as she walked home. 
conservatory, conservatory, conservatory. Frida, did you take a class trip in first grade? Velma asked her oldest sister. Absolutely, we went to the museum, Frida replied. Fiona, did you take a class trip in first grade? Velma asked her middle sister. Absolutely, we went to the aquarium, Fiona stated. Well, said Velma proudly, we're going to the can, can, can serve the story. That's way cool, Frida declared, and Fiona bobbled her head in way cool agreement. The Butterfly Conservatory was surrounded by fancy flower beds and bedecked with banners of butterflies. Velma was so excited, her knobby knees wobbled, her spaghetti arms trembled, and her carroty curls shook. A sharp-nosed woman holding a clipboard introduced herself. I am your tour guide. Inside, a butterfly might land on you, but please don't touch its wings. Does anyone know why? Velma's hand shot up. Because they're made of teeny tiny scales that could rub off like dust, and that is not good, she explained. Precisely, said the guide. What's your name? I'm Velma, the youngest of the three Gratch sisters. Hmm, I don't think I know your sisters, the guide commented as they entered the rain-forested room. It was a magical space, slathered in tall trees and tangled vines. Water gurgled over rocks and butterflies of every variety. Giant swallowtails, short-tailed skippers, pygmy blues, and best of all monarchs flew up to forever. The guide explained that when it got colder in a couple of weeks, she would take the monarchs into the park and let them go free so that they could fly to Mexico. This traveling was called migration. Because Velma didn't want to forget this extra long word, she repeated it again and again as she walked through the rainforest. Migration, migration, migration. A gorgeous green comma rested on Randy's head. The class ooed. A baby brown elephant settled on Sandy's nose. The class odd. A big blue morpho alighted on Andy's shoulder. The class gasped. But not one single butterfly landed on any part of Velma. Time to leave, instructed Mr. Plexipus as they neared the exit. A tear formed in a distant corner of Velma's eye. All she wanted was one single tingly touch of a butterfly. On a nearby branch sat a mostly love, a most lovely monarch. How she yearned to pet those velvety wings. She moved slowly. The class was leaving. One more inch. It was so pretty. She froze. If she touched its wings, it might. Velma couldn't do it. She couldn't hurt a butterfly. Come now, Velma. We have to go. Sadly, Velma turned away, and at that very moment, the most marvelous thing happened. What do you think it is? The monarch hopped from its branch and roosted right on Velma's finger. Delicate wings slowly folding and tanny twitching, weightless and wondrous, the insect sat. Velma was in heaven. Look how happy she is. The bus is waiting, her teacher called. Velma placed her finger next to the branch. Bye-bye, butterfly, she whispered but the monarch didn't move. We're closing, said the guide. Velma lightly blew on the butterfly. It didn't budge. 
Without ever touching the butterfly's wings, everyone tried to get the monarch to fly, crawl, or walk off Velma's finger, but nothing worked. At last, Velma was told to leave with the butterfly still perched on her pointer finger. It stayed there on the bus ride home. How amazing. It stayed there when she slept and was still there when she awoke. It stayed during gym, math, reading, ballet, soccer, day in and day out. It stayed put on that pointer. Soon, everyone from the class guinea pig to the principal knew about Velma and her butterfly. Mr. Plexipus lamented that Velma was positively the first Gratch ever sent to the principal's office twice. This stuck an oversized frown on Velma's face. Velma, Principal Crossley commanded, it is time for the butterfly to go. Oh, I've tried to get it to go, Velma moaned, but it just won't. Well, no one will ever forget this, the principal fumed. Velma's frown, pretzel twisted into a small smile. Hey, I know what to do, she proclaimed. My gray son? Velma paraded Principal Crossley, Mr. Plexipus, her class, Frida, and Fiona to the park. Car horns honked, people yelled, but despite all the commotion, the monarch did not move. A cool wind from the west blew through the field. In the middle stood the tour guide from the conservatory, carefully opening an enormous sack. A single monarch butterfly stepped out, looked around, and flitted away. It was trailed by ten, then ten more, soaring up and up until the sky overflowed with thick clouds of orange and black. What's happening? wondered Frida. Why are you letting them go? demanded Fiona. Migration, answered the guide. My gray son, repeated Velma. The wind tousled Velma's hair and tickled her butterfly's wings. The monarch jumped onto her nose as if to give her a kiss and then took flight to join its friends. Over the treetops it flew, over the skyscrapers, and up into the wild blue, orange, and black yonder on its way to Mexico. Velma! shouted Principal Crossley, and every eye turned towards her. Oh no, fretted Velma sure that she was about to become the only Gratch ever sent to the principal's office three times. That was way cool, the principal said, and one and all bobbled their heads in way cool agreement. Then, with her fine finger where the monarch had sat still, a tingle, Velma, followed by her two sisters, floated home. And that's the end of that book. But they have a little surprise at the end. All of those caterpillars in the front cover have turned to butterflies, except for the small Gretchens. <laughs> it's kind of a little joke from the illustrator. All right, I hope you enjoyed Velma Gratch and the Way Cool Butterfly. And this is another book that you can check out from our library. Thank you for listening. Up. So mm -hmm. we do have some books on li books on butterflies at the library, and I wanted to start off with um, some books on monarchs because we know that Velma Gratch was crazy about yes, monarch she butterflies. Was. So we have this one and this one, but we actually have some new books uh, at the library. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I was a monarch butterfly. This is a Ranger Rick book. We also have this one. Butterfly, and these are in the new section. But we'll have a Kim is going to set up a whole section with all of these butterfly books, so you can find mm -hmm. them quickly as soon as you come in. Right? Uh, the Secret World of Butterflies, and this has many of the
the butterflies that are discussed in the Bell McGratch book, and they're quite beautiful. And then if you really want to learn more mm -hmm. about monarchs, this is the extraordinary life of a monarch butterfly. And this is quite beautiful and it tells you everything that Velma Gratch wanted to know about <laughs> monarch butterflies. That's right. <laughs> okay, and then also, if you want to look at other butterflies and learn the names of them, you might want to have mom or dad check this book out. I mean, you could check it out too, but you might want mom or dad to help you look at it. It talks about the metamorphosis of butterflies. And that was on the first mm -hmm. page. It had many of yeah. those. Yeah, it has the different stages. And then through here, it shows different pictures of butterflies and where they live in Illinois and where you can find them. So you might be able to use that. And that's like the last page in Bell McGrath. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and then we have some other butterfly books also we're just going to go through and again these will I will have them all set up on a shelf so all that you can uh, check out all these different books about butterflies all right now let's get to our drawing and it's for our handy dandy gliders that would be flying through the air and I just lost a name yep. they were stuck to them if you haven't picked yours up yet, they're still waiting for you at the library. Mm -hmm. Let me make sure that I got those all off. Maybe yep. we won't do that next time. I might make bigger stickers this time. All right, so we get five. There's number oh, one. Gosh. Xavier Simpson. All right. I know Xavier. He goes to my school. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's see. Zevin Zimbro. Isabella Lampley. Right. There's number four. Oh. Braxton Cottle. His <laughs> grandmother was just in the yes, library she was. getting his craft packet. Last one. And Ella Pitts. All right. Make sure and come in and pick up your lighters. They come in a couple of different colors, so when your names are on them, they're right there. Um, and then also remember that your craft packets for the next uh, virtual reading program are ready to be picked up. So, all right, until next time. We can't wait to see you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.